Good evening, I am Dr. Swarupa Mitra. I am a radiation oncologist. Uh, today we will talk about the process of radiation. Whenever a patient comes to us for radiation, he hardly knows what radiation is. In fact, he has all negative uh, thoughts about radiation. So very briefly, I'll say what radiation is and how he goes about it. So, when, so whenever a patient comes to us, the first thing is that when he enters the OPD, we sit with him and he is made comfortable and we look at all his records, we examine him and then decide that yes, this is the patient who is going to undergo radiation. Now many times radiation is given alone and sometimes radiation is given along with a very weekly light dose of chemotherapy. And the function of the chemotherapy is only to increase the effectivity of the radiation and in fact, you know, increase the sensitivity of the radiation to the tumors. So when a radiation starts, it is a long process. Generally, it is about five weeks, six weeks. It depends on which part of the body is being treated, which cancer is being treated. So for a cervical cancer or any pelvic cancer, it is generally for about five to five and a half weeks. So five and a half weeks means it is five days a week. Saturday, Sunday, generally the radiation is not given as a rule all over the world. Now radiation is something you cannot start off all of a sudden. A planning is needed. So planning means the first day when the patient comes, the first of all, when we have decided that the radiation needs to be given, the patient is counseled that this is what you're going to undergo. This is how the radiation is going to take place. These are the side effects which may you may encounter and this is how your overall outcome is going to be. So after he understands this, a consent is taken, a written consent where the patient signs and the patient's the caregiver, whosoever he is, he signs a consent. That means the patient is now ready to take a treatment. So uh, the first step is that the patient's a cast is made. The cast is actually an immobilization device. So it is a plastic or fit mask, which is made customized to the patient's area to be treated. And it is this which he wears, which he puts on during the treatment. So you can see this one, like this is a head neck. Cast. So this is a kind of plastic cast which he wears. The purpose is that he does not move during the treatment. Now when the mask is made, it is specially for the patient. Nobody else can use it. Now after the mask is made, a scan is done. And this scan is a planning scan. You don't get any report for this. And after the cast and the scan is made, the patient goes home. Now we require about two days time to see how to treat the patient which we call as planning. During the planning, we don't need the patient, we have the patient scan and we plan that which area needs to be treated and not only treated, we have to see that the normal areas, the normal organs which are all around, they should be protected. So we have to deliver the maximum dose to the area to be treated and at the same time, we protect all the normal areas. So this is what we call as planning. So after the planning is done, we call the patient and then the patient is actually started on the treatment. So the kind of radiation treatment techniques we have, they are all very, very innovative and very targeted. So with all of them, we can give, deliver the maximum dose to the treatment to be treated and also protect the normal areas. So out of these, we have the IMRT, that is the Intensity Modulated Radiotherapy. Another is the IGRT or the image guided radiotherapy. We have the ARC therapy or the VMAT. So on the whole, almost all are targeted. It is just that one is slightly more targeted than the others. The IGRT and the VMAT, they are, we take the help of the imaging device during the treatment. So there is an imaging device when the patient is undergoing the treatment. So we, there is an online scan which is done when the patient is on the machine, we target that area and then the treatment is delivered. So it is more targeted and the amount of normal area which is being exposed by radiation, it, it is actually lesser with the image guided radiation. Then most of the other cancers like the pelvic cancer, the IGRT may not be um, absolutely necessary. But in some areas like a 
or tumor which is located to uh, with some very important structures like maybe the lung or maybe very near to the heart very near to the kidney so these are those areas where a uh, imaging is required so that we can protect the normal areas around so these are basically the uh, techniques which we have for delivering radiation these are all external beam radiotherapy or the ebrt we have also brachytherapy which in very simple terms we can call as internal radiation so these are intra cavitary radiation or intra luminal radiation so here in the brachytherapy or internal radiation the treatment is given very close to the area of the body so something very common is the cervical cancers the endometrial cancers where brachytherapy forms a very very important part so this is roughly how a radiation works and during the radiation the patient is given a fixed time he comes takes the radiation and goes he does not need to come to the opd every time he visits but yes once in a week we need to see the patient to see that the patient is doing well if he has some difficulty if the expected side effects we have to address them we are absolutely encourage patients to come to the opd whenever they feel that they have a need so the side effects are with these days of radiation therapy like i said they are all targeted so the side effects are not as bad so whichever irrespective of the site which is being treated so there may be a slight discoloration of the skin if it is a pelvic radiation he may or he may or she may have some uh, loose motions some mild abdominal cramps if the patient is treat being treated for the head neck he may have ulcerations in the mouth or in the throat so that makes sometimes the difficulty in intake so, so many times we need to put in a rail tube so that the patients is able to continue through the radiation without any difficulty so most of the times most of our patients they are able to complete the entire radiation without much gap so otherwise uh, the patients are always welcome to so that we can address to any of their problems thank you